Hello again and welcome to Kimmel Bay Church in North Wales. Uh, it's good to meet together and have a few thoughts around God's Word. And today we're going to Mark's Gospel, the second Gospel in the New Testament, and chapter 1 of Mark's Gospel and verse 14 and 15. And the title that we've been asked to consider is very simple really, The Lord Reigns, The Lord Reigns. And these are the verses that we're asked to consider. Just two verses. We read this in the 14th verse of the chapter of one of Mark's Gospel. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Well, Jesus was here in person, uh, taking uh, his place on earth as he came as the saviour of the world and he came to uh, represent God, if you like, uh, on, on, on this earth. And he came, the wonderful miracle of incarnation of God coming to earth and meeting up in person with his creature. It's absolutely wonderful, really. And uh, this is the miracle of in incarnation. And God reigns and always will. Now let's get back to basics, shall we, to quote a former Prime Minister. Let's get back to basics when we consider this phrase, the Lord reigns. Well, to get back to basics, the Lord always has reigned. He always has reigned. Wipe right back in the ages of eternity, if you can use that phrase. It's not accurate because... Eternity doesn't have ages. <clears throat> Eternity is endless. And God always was in the uh, endless um, times. Uh, no, times is not the right word either. You, you're, you're floored really when you try and describe eternity. But eternity is endless. And God, before he ever created the world, before he created you and I, before he, he made the air that we breathe, have you ever considered that the very air that we breathe, we breathe by permission of Almighty God. And this is the Almighty God who reigns and always has reigned and always has been King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And as we get back to basics, we remember that this is the God that we adore. This is the God who went out of his way to um, reconcile mankind to himself, as we know in the truth of the gospel that lord jesus came to save us from our sins back to basics the lord reigns he always has reigned from eternity past to eternity in the future there will always be god god will always be there and you and i will live in eternity too god reigns he is almighty the uh, church of england prayer book reminds us when the, when we hear their prayer that the written prayer almighty god from whom no secrets are hid, to whom all hearts are open. That's the God that we're talking about. God reigns. And Jesus here has arrived on earth and he's beginning his ministry here and he's announcing, if you like, God's kingdom and the fact that it's arrived on earth, that uh, uh, it's come in the person of his son in one sense, that, that, that the kingdom of God has been here in the Old Testament, of course, in the person of uh, the Holy Spirit as he appeared to various of God's servants and so on. And here we've got Jesus, if you like, announcing that it's, it's come in its fullness, if you like, and that the, uh, the, the, the kingdom of God has arrived. And whenever Jesus exercised the authority of God by his deeds here on earth, when he did miracles and he uh, helped people and healed people and and when he forgave people's sins, he was in effect emphasizing, emphasizing God's kingdom here on earth. Now, we live in a world when, of course, uh, nothing's changed from the days of the people who wrote the Bible. And some will still say, well, if God reigns, why all the industri in injustice in the earth? Why all the illness? Why all the cruelty? Why all the injustice? Yes. And uh, I want to refer to you to... Uh, the Apostle Peter in one of his letters because he deals with this issue really and I'm going to read a verse or two from Peter's second letter if you look up 2 Peter chapter 3 if you look up 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8 
we'll um, we'll just share those words together. I'll just get my Bible, and here we are, verse eight, where we read uh, in answer to this question that uh, Peter has come across. People are saying, "Well, why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't God?" Peter says, "Don't forget this, dear friends." A day or a thousand years from now is like tomorrow to the Lord. He isn't really being slow about his promised return, even though it sometimes seems that way. He is waiting, waiting for good reason, for the good reason that he's not willing that anybody should perish, and he is giving more and more time for sinners to turn back to him. Isn't that wonderful? Doesn't that reflect to you the mercy of God? Doesn't that reflect to you, it does to me, the, the fact that God doesn't want any, he would like to have us all in his heaven, but he's waiting, giving utmost time, giving maximum time for us all to turn back to him and ask for his forgiveness and uh, new life in Jesus. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, and, 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 and it reminds us, these verses from... Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8 and 9, they remind us that it's God's mercy that motivates him to hold back on that final judgment. He, he's not willing that any should perish. One day, one day, things will be put right. Make no mistake about it. One day, justice will be done. When Jesus comes back to this world, when Jesus comes back to his world, Meanwhile, there is time to get right with God who reigns. God reigns, yes he does, praise his name. God reigns and uh, he always will reign. He is Lord, he is Lord, the old chorus says. When I was a young Christian, we used to sing a chorus which said this, God is still on the throne and he will remember his own. His promise is true, he will not forget you. God is still on the throne. Praise his name, King of kings and Lord of lords. Have a good day. The Lord bless you. Goodbye.